Hey, this is Jay McGavern. I hope you enjoyed learning about Ruby's each method and blocks, and I want to make sure you have the tools to play along if you want to try it out yourself. So this is a little quick screencast to show you how to get started. So the first order of business is probably to make sure that you have Ruby. Fire up a terminal or command prompt and type ruby-v at the prompt. If you get a response like you see here, that means you have Ruby successfully installed. It's probably already installed if you're running uh, Mac OS X, for example. Other systems, though, you'll probably need to go get it. In your favorite web browser, visit ruby-lang.org and click on the download Ruby link. Now, if you like to do this sort of thing yourself, this page will have info on where you can download source you can compile, but a lot of folks will just want to click the installation page where you can download pre-made installers for your favorite platform. So just scroll down this page to find your OS, click your preferred installation method, and follow the instructions you see there. Okay, congratulations, you've got a working Ruby installation. We're not going to launch the main Ruby interpreter itself right now, though. Instead, we're going to launch IRB, which stands for Interactive Ruby. So type IRB from your shell prompt, and you'll be taken to the Interactive Ruby prompt. Here at the IRB prompt, you can type any Ruby expression, and Ruby will evaluate it and print the result. So we start by making an array, and you can see that the result is that same array. And let's assign that same array to a variable so that we can play around with it, call a few methods on it. And we'll start off by calling the each method on it, which you saw in the blog post. And of course, each requires a block. What you see here is an alternate notation for blocks than what we saw in the blog post. Uh, the blog post used do end notation. This uses curly brackets. You can choose either one when you're using a block. It's more traditional if your block is all going to be on a single line to use the curly brackets, though. And what this block will do is simply take each item from the array and print it out to the screen on a single line. So we hit enter to evaluate our expression. And there you see our output. There's other methods we can call on an array besides each, though. To find out what they are, let's exit the IRB shell and invoke another tool that should have been installed along with Ruby. It's RI, standing for Ruby Information, Ruby Info. So you type RI and then a space and then the name of the class you want to learn more about. In this case, we want to know about Array. Make sure to use a capital A. It'll launch your pager program, showing you information about the class. And we want to know about the class's methods, so we're going to scroll way to the bottom. And there are two lists here, one of class methods and one of instance methods, those being the methods you can call on a particular instance of the array class, that is, an array object. So there's lots of cool methods listed here, but there's a couple in particular I want to show you today. Map and Select. So now we know what the methods names are, but how do we know what they do? Well, first let's press Q to quit out of our pager program. And now we're gonna type RI and the name of the array class again, but this time we're going to append a hash or number sign symbol after it, followed by the name of the method we wanna know more about. And that notation you see there isn't Ruby syntax, but it is usually how you indicate a particular instance method on a Ruby class within documentation. So this means we want info on the map method on array instances. And if we hit enter again, it'll bring up a pager program again, this time taking us directly to information on the map method. From this listing here, we can see that like the each method before it, the map method does take a block and it'll pass each item in the array to it. What differs though, is that it will look at the return value of the block for each item and place that return value into a new array. What you'll get back is a collection of all the new values. Back at the command line, we can use a similar command to look up info on the select instance method for arrays. And from its listing, we can see that it also iterates over each element of the array and passes it to its block. And it's also looking for a return value, but this time it's expecting a true or false value. And if it's true, it'll keep the element in a new array. And if it's false, it'll discard it. And with both the map and select methods, by the way, the original array and its contents are left untouched. It's creating a new array with new values. So now that we know what methods we're going to be invoking, let's quit out of the pager and launch IRB again. So first, let's try out that map method that we saw on arrays. We're going to need an array to work with. This time I made an array of strings. 
And remember that we saw in the documentation that the map method takes a block, which it will pass each item in the array to, and then build a new array based on its results. So here we've chosen to name the parameter that will accept items from the array string, and we're going to call the capitalize method on each of those strings. That should leave us with an array of all capitalized names. We can also hit the up arrow in IRB to bring the prior command up. We can edit the expression to assign it to a variable if we want to work with it more later. Now let's try using that select method on an array. We've got that array of capitalized names in the caps variable, and we'll call the select method on that array. Just like the other methods we've looked at, it passes each element of the array to a block. We'll call the block parameter name this time. And like the map method, it's looking for a return value from the block, but this one is looking for a true-false value that decides whether a given element is going to be kept in the new array or not. So here we set it up to only keep those strings with a length of greater than three characters. And if we run it, we see that it kept Anna and Zeke, whose names are four characters long, but poor Joe is gone. So far, all of these methods we've been demonstrating have been on arrays, but other collections in Ruby have each and similar methods as well. So here we're going to create a Ruby hash. You know, might know hashes in other languages by the name of dictionaries or associative arrays. The keys in our associative array will be student names, and the values will be the grades they received. And we can call each on this hash just like we have been with arrays, the difference being that the block we pass to each needs to include two parameters, one for the keys and one for the values. And this block will simply take each of the key value pairs from our hash and print them out for us, neatly formatted. And this technique of using each with blocks extends to almost anything that you could represent as a collection. For example, all the lines in a file. I have a plain text markdown file sitting in the current directory, so I open that up using the file.open method. And just like arrays and hashes before it, I can call each on the file object. Each will pass each of the lines in the file to the block one at a time, and I just have the block print them out. And if we run it, the result is that we can see the entire contents of the file. I'm going to show you another method that works on file objects, but we already processed all the contents of the file with that first command, so I'm going to close and reopen the file real quick. So we've seen that hashes and file objects and so forth can be treated as collections and can take the each method, but it's not just the each method. All the other methods such as map and select will work as well. So we can take the file object and call select on it, and in this block we can set up our condition to be to select only lines whose length is less than 10. And if we run it, the result is an array with all the shortest lines from our file. This was meant to just be a quick tour showcasing the power of Ruby's blocks for working with collections. Hope you enjoyed it. And when you have some free time, I encourage you to try loading up IRB and play around with some arrays and their methods yourself. Thanks for watching.